Holy crap. It has been five days since my last uh, post-game reaction. So, uh, hello everybody. Welcome to Also Rusty Buckets. It has been a while since I've done one of these. So, uh, subscribe to the channel if you're not already and drop a like on this video. You know the drill. Uh, so today, a few games. That's I don't know why I do this same intro every time. So today I watched some games. Yeah, that's the that's the point of this thing, you idiot. Uh, so the games that I watched, I watched the first half of Hornets versus Nets. Tuned out of that one because the the Hornets were getting ass blasted. Uh, I watched Heat versus Warriors, Spurs versus Hawks, and Nuggets versus Clippers. And really, these last three games were all really good games. So I, I luckily picked them well today. Um, so going down the list for the Hornets versus Nets game, um, I was interested in this one mostly because of LaMarcus Aldridge debuting. And in the first half... <coughs> Excuse me. In the first half that I watched, he looked fine. Uh, hit a hit a fadeaway. Hit a couple of other shots. Uh, he was making good passes. He finished this game with six assists. Uh, I really think that him on this roster and with Nick Claxton breaking out, this really just means DeAndre Jordan is, at least by the time the playoffs come around, is just simply not going to be a rotation player. Because if you look at the box score of this one, uh, DeAndre Jordan did not play. Coach's decision. Um, so that's, that's not a great sign for him. I think LaMarcus Aldridge and Claxton is just going to be, that's going to be what they're running from now on. Uh, I'm hoping LaMarcus is not getting more minutes than Claxton down the line. Uh, he played a lot more in this one, but it's not the end of the world. Uh, I think Claxton will have that starter role or at the very least the most minutes played by the time they're in the playoffs. Um, and for the Hornets side of things, this game was not, it's not as much the offense because I'm pretty sure, did James Harden even play this one? I'm pretty sure it was Kyrie Irving. Yeah, it's just Kyrie and uh, obviously LaMarcus added and then the guys who have already been there. Um, but the reason this game went so poorly for them wasn't so much the defense because they, they didn't play good defense. They didn't play bad defense. It was offense. They couldn't make a shot to save their life. They finished this one with 89, and it's not like the Nets are known for their lockdown defense, especially with slow-ass LaMarcus Aldridge in the starting lineup. Uh, this They had like nine points with three minutes left in the first quarter at, at, at one point. Well, that's the, the point that I just said. Uh, like, P.J. Washington got multiple open corner threes that did not go. Terry Rozier had a couple of open threes that did not go. They were just missing plenty of good shot opportunities. They just were not dropping. They finished this game 35% uh, from the field. Yeah, that's not going to cut it. <laughs> yeah, that's the story of that one. Uh, then if I can move on to Hawks versus uh, no wait let me do let me do Heat versus Warriors first. Uh, this was a close game. Uh, it was interesting because this is the debut for Victor Oladipo, and I made a point to keep an eye on him. Uh, it was interesting. Now his box score is not going to stand out and seem all that impressive. Three turnovers, uh, two for eight from the field, zero for four from three, uh, missed three free throws, six points, three rounds, five assists. Uh, it, it's also, he was nervous, like very clearly nervous. I tweeted like Oladipo has had multiple opportunities to score here that he ended up forcing a bad pass. Uh, and I think it's just cause he's afraid to step on toes. Like for example, uh, he had a fast break opportunity with Bam out of bio and it was like a two on one. I think there might've been a trailing defender, but Oladipo, the guy who was the defending in front of Oladipo, was very clearly committed to defending Bam Adebayo, and Oladipo probably should have just laid it up, or at least jumped up to draw that defender out of the way, and then dished it to Bam, but it seemed like on that break, he was like, fuck, I gotta pass this ball, and he, he passed it to Bam, and it got turned over. Uh, there was another play where he had plenty of space for a pull-up shot, and it looked like he was gonna take it, and then he threw a pass into the lane, I think it was to bam again and that one got tipped uh, i think it hit someone's foot and he was looking for a kickball but regardless uh he he did not seem comfortable yet and it's understandable it's first game with the new team and oladipo has not been great as of the past two years or so so it's understandable for him to be a little little um little nervous especially because miami's offense is pretty complex and defensively defensively he was fantastic. Uh, he had one play where he got Curry trapped in the corner, and he just locked him the fuck up. Um, so that was the main thing I was focus fo focusing on. Main thing I was focusing on in this game. Another thing I noticed is that Andrew Wiggins was fucking awesome in this one. Um, and he's been really good lately. He finished this one 5 for 11 from 3. He's up to 40% from 3 this season. Um, 
Although for all the people who keep asking me on Twitter, does this mean he's no longer a bust? As I said in my deep dive on Andrew Wiggins, being a very good role player is not any, anywhere close to where Andrew Wiggins' ceiling is. So no, he's still a bust. Um, but regardless of that, he is still a very valuable role player for Golden State. There are multiple games where he seems to be their second best player. Of course, Draymond is on most days their second best player, but Andrew consistently steps into that role. Finishes with 23 in this one. Uh, just just very good shooting all around. Steph had a good game, as he usually does. Dray Draymond had a near triple-double. And they still lost this game because outside of Oladipo's timidness and a couple of bad passes, uh, this is a well-played game from the Miami Heat. Um, uh, Tyler Hero was scoring very well off of the bench for them. Bam Adebayo was doing Bam Adebayo things. Jimmy Butler did some great distribution. And he, he finished with 22, but I swear he was all, 20, all 22 of those points came in like bigger moments uh the heat got a decent lead with like five minutes left in the fourth quarter and the warriors actually made a bit of a push late uh but the heat managed to hold that one off andre andre Iguodala as well had a good game uh just wanted to point that out but yeah that's that game then if we can talk about spurs versus hawks double overtime game um I'll be honest, though, this is probably the game I paid the least amount of attention to uh, uh, among all of them. Um, so I can mostly just box score watch here. Uh, I watched the overtimes, but the actual game itself, there was not much to, to be said. Uh, I did want to watch. There's a lot of debut things here. Lou Williams, I wanted to keep an eye on. Uh, he finished three for ten, although he was more. I was he did a lot of good playmaking to make up for the fact that he wasn't really doing much scoring wise. And I will say the more and more I think about the Lou for Rondo trade, the more and more I like it for both sides. Because uh, initially with the with the Hawks side of things, I was like, you didn't get a second round pick for Rondo, but then apparently they did. And I just didn't know that. Uh, the way it was originally reported, it just looked like a swap. And I guess I didn't figure out the details. Uh, but then also Lou, I think almost like he's probably a little bit better for the Hawks offensive system. Not because he not because he's a better playmaker but really because he fits the backing up Trey Young role more just because he plays more like Trey Young obviously a worse version that's a given but Rondo like kind of shifts the way the offense works when he comes in when all the system and the players are all built to work in a system where they're it's a six foot scoring guard who is also a pretty decent playmaker. So Lou Williams, I think, fits a little bit better if he's just, he's almost like, I'm just going to be the C minus version of, uh, of Trey Young for like 15 minutes here. And that's pretty much what he did. So good for Lou Will. Uh, Bogdan, really good game. Clint Capella, I, I say this every time. Every time I talk about the Hawks, Clint Capella is so damn good for the Hawks. Uh, Trey Young in this one, something I find interesting looking at this box score, two for two from three. Uh, he finished with 28. He was getting to the lane like it was nothing in the overtimes. It was kind of embarrassing on the Spurs part. Uh, and uh, like 28 points for him with two threes is pretty nuts. 12 assists as he always does stuff like that. I don't understand why Solomon Hill was starting over Gallo. I guess like just to keep him being a six man. He still played more minutes. So it doesn't matter. Um, Spurs side of things. Seems like Derek White either has a terrible game or a great game every time I watch the Spurs. There's no in between. This one he had 29 points, though he did turn it over uh, late in the double overtime, so that wasn't a great play. Uh, he, he went up and down, uh, and Trey was kind of making fun of him in the timeout after, which is funny. Uh, but other than that, he was, it's still a very good game. Uh, I wanted to point out DeJounte Murray as well. Uh, DeJounte is going to be in the class of player like a Marcus Smart where it's not easy to rank how good they are, but every single team in the league would want a guy like him. Uh, as for how this overtime went, it really, like all of these, it seemed like one team clearly had the upper hand and then, oh shit, we got a late game push. Uh, Bogdanovich to end, it was either, was it the fourth quarter or overtime one? I'm pretty sure it was overtime one. Uh, Bogdanovich had an opportunity uh, with the game winner and it went in but he released it like a second too late and it was such a beautiful looking shot it's unfortunate that it did not count uh a second overtime uh like i said trey young was getting to the lane rather easily the spurs hit a big three with like 
30 seconds left. Uh, and then Trey comes on the court, runs down, and then Gallo is open in the corner. It's not that open, actually. He did a fake pass and then shot it, and that dropped. And that was pretty much all she wrote on that one, which it didn't help that Derek White went up the court and then turned it over. Uh, but yeah, it was a good, good played game. Like this was a situation where neither team did anything too stupid. Obviously the up and down was stupid, but for the most part, uh, this was just a well-played game on mo both parts. There was also a coach's challenge on a Trey Young lean in foul thing. I don't know if there was a controversy about that on Twitter or something like that. Cause that kind of always happens. Uh, at this point, I'm like, look, that's how they call it. So I'm not going to flip my shit because I've seen it so many times now. Where there's no point in me being annoyed with that's how it works. So it is what it is. Uh, but the main thing I want to focus on today, 11 minutes into this fucking video, uh, is the Denver Nuggets. Uh, I was thinking about making this video about the Clippers, but as the game continued going on, it just became more and more about how good the Nuggets were and less so the Clippers making mistakes because the Nuggets had a good handle on this one the most way through. Uh, they actually had like a near like a 15 point per game, point per game, a 15 point lead at like midway through the third quarter, but the Clippers actually turned it on and made a bit of a run. I was originally going to make this video commenting on some of the problems the Clippers still have over uh, from last year, and one of them is being stagnant on both ends of the court and not really seeming to have the, uh, oh shit, we need to flip, flip a switch and get this shit done type of thing that you want to see out of great teams but they did that in this game uh they really turned up the defensive intensity created a couple of turnovers there was one play where Kawhi threw a lob to Patrick Patterson where I was like damn Patrick Patterson can catch alley-oops um uh so it was a very good comeback from the Clippers to get into this one uh but the Nuggets really didn't let them get it because while they got the game relatively close, the Nuggets never really seemed to panic. Of course, there were a couple of possessions where the Nuggets didn't look great. Otherwise, you can't really make a comeback, period. But they just had a steady, steady, what's the term? They were just steady-handed the whole way through? I don't fucking know, man. Uh, they looked comfortable. Jamal Murray clutches hell. Jokic clutches hell. Uh, can I talk about, for a second, Aaron Gordon on the Nuggets? is a match made in heaven dude like defensively in this one i just hit the mic uh Kawhi, i don't i don't, I don't actually know i'm gonna, i'm curious sometimes i think a player did eh, and then i look at the box score and they have like 40. okay so Kawhi leonard he did eh. he, he's 10 for 20 20, 20 10 for 22 uh he 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 was he was fine uh, but there were multiple possessions where Aaron Gordon gave him trouble. And that's the real reason why you make this trade, especially in the Western conference. Like the, they didn't, the Nuggets did not have somebody to throw it to Kawhi to really give him any issues last year. They still won the series, obviously, but like Tory Craig was what they were looking to go to, uh, in situations like that. And no offense to Tory Craig, but a Aaron Gordon's better defensive player and B Aaron Gordon's more valuable offensively because on top of him just being a great defensive player and a big forward, which you want in the Western conference, when you have both LA teams to worry about, they also, he also fits well offensively because he's such a good cutter and such a good athlete. And while his three ball is not what you like it to be, it's not, terrible so you get that in a situation where there's so many playmakers and so many shot creators and he can really just be fully in his element where he focuses on defense and offensively he plays to his strengths you don't see Aaron Gordon out there taking a bunch of pull-up mid-range shots like he was in in Orlando like he just does everything that he knows he's good at and it fits so well in Denver and watching this game I was like dude nobody in the league and I mean nobody in the fucking league can stop Nikola Jokic point blank period no one can stop him and then you add on to it that Jamal Murray is having the best season of his career and he has the microwave tendency of heating the fuck up that's what a microwave is uh and then Michael Porter Jr while underutilized still also has great games and he's improved defensively Aaron Gordon fits flawlessly with this damn team like this team is fucking perfect, man. And the only thing that's going to hold them back is other teams just simply being more talented or just having more uh, experience. That's going to be it. Like, otherwise, 
the Nuggets have what it takes. And I, I think the Nuggets need respect in terms of talking about what teams are going to be the best teams in the NBA and what teams are going to be potentially winning championships. Like, honestly, after the Lakers... I don't want to sound crazy here, but I wouldn't be... Would I take the Nuggets over the Clippers? Because the Clippers still concern me, dude. I'm not going to say confidently one way or the other. All I know is that uh, I think I, I prefer them over the Jazz. I prefer them over the Suns. Uh, it's the two LA teams and the Nuggets, I think, are the three best teams in that conference, solidly. Even if the Jazz have like 15 more wins or whatever the fuck it is. Uh, yeah, the Nuggets. A lot of praise for them in this one. Uh, I'm sure Asher is going to be very satisfied. Uh, but yeah, that's that's all I had to say today. Uh, Clipper side of things, I think I covered that, didn't I? Yeah, but, but I was I was questioning their fight in this one. They made a bit of a push. Oh, also shout out to Terrence Mann, fantastic game from him, and he continues to have good games. He is definitely a rotation player for them, and definitely I think going to be a a solid NBA player throughout his career, if not a good one, because he has flashes of being a really good one. Uh, but yeah, that's it. All right. Bye.